Yes, good morning. Uh, my name is um, Thorsten Niebuhr from Germany. Um, but I think we've been through that already. I will talk about the rotation to rotations, which is part of the identity relationship management work group. Um, um, last, no, I think it was in May or June, we produced or fin finalized uh, we find that's a bad slide. Sorry, <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> we, we finalized the, uh, the, the, the document with five design principles of identity management with the six design principles related to that. And um, what we have identified, uh, the six <coughs> principles are, you can see it here, it's on, in, in the document as well, provable. So make sure that a relationship can be proved and the other way around what happens if someone just declares a relationship to be there. How can I make sure that the unproved relationship can be removed? Which is also important. Constrainable, um, other part of the relationship, so when we have two, uh, two entities related, should be able to set a constraint on the user. Mutability, it might change, but we also might have a, a relationship which can change. For example, what this is A was made by B, that will never change. Revocable, regarding the ending of relations, uh, of a relation, how to do that, what, what are the constraints for that, what needs to be taken into account, and delegable. The changing of the actors itself, either temporary, which is the delegation, or forever, which is really a move of the entity. So we exchange one of the, or maybe both, of the relations. That is all in the document, and we finalized that document <coughs> with the section, the onward journey. And what we have identified or, or planned for the next month, years, is to describe what needs to be done if you have, or what, what, how could a relationship manager look like? And how could a relationship rotation look like? Um, regarding the relationship manager, it will be hard if the ent entity themselves in a relation needs to fully manage their relationship. You can't do that. You need some kind of instance to orchestrate the relations you have with other entities. And the other side is to, to enable a relationship manager to do this, you need something to describe the notation, uh, the relation. You need a relationship notation. When we start with that, and in the document itself, we have the, the phrase notation language. And when I started on this um, specific topic, I realized notation language is not correct. Because both notation and language describe the same. So this notation language is kind of tautology, it's, a, it's the same with both. So we'll uh, talk about notations only, not notation language. I hope I can get this and will not use notation language anymore. That's a little bit hard. <coughs> So, on entity relations, first of all, the, the term entity, we, the, the group, and we all talk about identities all the time. I would like to talk about entities, because it's not always an identity, a person, it could be anything. It's an entity. It could be a machine, it could be my phone, it could be a country, it could be a department, whatever. So, entity. We already know, or talk about entity relations, quite a wide and database design. So why do we need something new? The new point or the big difference on identity, no entity relationship management is we deal with disconnected entities here. So we do not have that all in one database with one table. We do have that linked and spread all over the world. That's a big difference to to the database uh, situation we have right now, or to, to, to the point of view uh, we have. <coughs> Help us to see what needs to be done for the notation. Um, 
I think you have all seen something like this. Actually, these relationship models. It's great. It's a graphical rotation. It's great for humans. It's a little bit hard for machines. We have different um, notations for uh, entity relationship models. This is from uh, Wikipedia. Uh, Gen uh, ID, Edifix, Bachmann, and so on. Uh, you, you, uh, so we already have something like that. But what we already see here is two entities connected by something. For relation notation, we need to be sure or make sure that it first supports the six design principles we have identified. We have that already, provable, delegable, and so It needs to be machine interpretable and human understandable. Um, Mark, you have tell you the same. Human understandable and human readable are two different things. <laughs> um, as well as machine interpretable and machine understandable. Um, so I think it's, it's, it's clear what this means. It needs to work for machines and it needs to work in some way for humans. Um, we have that already and we need to support disconnected entities. Or remote entities. Uh, who is familiar with the DID discussion right now going on? Distributed identification. This is part of it. We need this. And it should be standard oriented, or in the end, hopefully, a standard. Symbols, objects, and concepts. We need to be able and we need to, to find a way that the sender and the receiver of the notation or description or notation is able to understand what is going on here. Um, we have a good example here, for example, this light bulb is made by Epic Corporation. A sentence, human understandable. Why do we understand this? Because we are all familiar with language and it has a form subject, predicate, object. But the subject, light bulb, the predicate is made by, and we have an object, with, which is the technical operation of this um, To make this a little bit more machine interpretable, I have chosen to say, okay, light bulb A is made by corporation A. That's fine. We still understand this. As a human, a machine could interpret this as well. But what means light bulb? What means made by? Now we start into something a part of the graph theory. I'm not talking about graph databases now. I will do it in a few minutes, okay? But right now this is just about a relation between subject and object. Subject, predicate, object. We have notes in this uh, view, we have edges or lines and arts. And here you see the example from the light bulbs. Light bulb A and light bulb B is made by Epi Corporation. And happily enough, we have light bulb C as well, which is made by uh, B, C, and E, whatever. Entities, subject, object, and a predicate between us. In a notation, we could Describe this like we see here. We have a prefix definition, and within the prefix definition, we um, do have uniform resource identifier or international resource identifier, IRE, which goes into the direction with the DID stuff. Um, and here we can describe that the prefix LB is described using this IRE. This is not, it do not have to be really a website and an address I can, I can check, but it's a unique identifier. That's important. Um, with these descriptions, I can make the same statements we have seen before about our light bulb A, B, and C. What we see here, is already established. This is RDF, resource description. <coughs> a 
It's a specification from 1999 within the area of the semantic web, in Barnesley. And what we do with, or can do with uh, RDF is make a statement um, in the form subject, predicate, object, and this is known as triple. The URI or IRR bounds into the namespace, and we have for that a kind of concept domain. So the namespaces can define the concept of domain. I can describe things for entity A, which is related to company A. And I, describe, I can describe things related to the object, which might be country C, whatever. We just need to define that using the IRE, using the identifiers. What we also have on top of RDF is something um, defined as web ontology language. This is now regarding ontologies, but the definition of this description, what is what. And OWL, um, it's not W-O-L, because OWL is easier to pronounce, not kidding me. <laughs> so, OWL, uh, o um, on top of RDF, and you see here, I have another pre uh, prefix, RDF, RDFS, OWL, and I can, using this part, and this part here, I can clearly describe already now with link data information what this is all about. We can describe that we have property, we have a colon which describes this, and we can even go and say hey, fine, um is made by this is a symmetric property, which means I have a symmetry between another attribute and this procedure has previous. So this previous by has produced. We can do that all right now. Um, and we can use that already with um, a query language, SparkQL, we all know SQL. And SparkQL is the same for graph database or triple stores. Well, um, uh, more correct. We can do implicit <coughs> and explicit queries here. I have to uh, uh, done implicit here. Quite simple. Everyone familiar with SQL will, will, will realize what's going on here. SpikeUL has a few different uh, things, um, especially for triple store. And I think this is the last slide. So we have a query language and we have notation. And uh, together, I think, StarQL is query language, RDF, OWL, implementation, we have standardized, machine interpretable, notation, which supports disconnections and remotes. And with the use of ontologies, we can do much more. You all use RDF and ontology whenever you go to Wikipedia and checking a language checking your country. All the different information on the right side, that is linked data. It's not a Wikipedia itself. It's linked data automatically um, produced using ontolo ontological information and RDS. Oops, it was a loss. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thanks, Thorsten. <laughs> I, I just had a question. Do you want to say when the group meets and the schedules for the calls and stuff? Right now, we have a schedule every two weeks on Tuesday. Um, <coughs> I have to check once again. The, the uh, details are on the Pantara side, um, the, the, the group um, details on this. Um, we really, 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 really need more help and more power, more person, people. Uh, to, uh, to, to help us on this. What we have seen here is, is, is very early phase of the discussion. We do not even have really had a good broad day by day discussion on that. So it might all help, it might totally disappear within the next month. Um, what do we see? Yeah, hope to discussion. For those of you who don't know it, that's kentariainitiative.org is the website. Um, and then under the working groups, you can go and get involved in that. 
Um, this is definitely an opportunity for us to get involved in starting to talk about how we deal with relationships. Right? It's, it's, as I say, we definitely need help on it, and we're going to. Okay, that was my oh, question. More, yeah, more questions. Yeah, so are you looking at this in terms of the relationship between the students perhaps how relationships sit in different models, like, like networks versus models where people, organizations, and um, things, um, like against the federation, or uh, blockchain network, or, yeah. It's, it's, this, no, other way around. The, the, <clears throat> What we need is a way to describe a, a relation between two entities of whatever kind. Mm -hmm. It's not important, or it doesn't matter if that one thing is a person and the other one is a network, or one is a person and the other one is, is a color, whatever. It needs to, what we need to do for this is have a way to bring meaning into data and relations. So, and that's the problem to, with, to, with to, to relations. Decide. Yeah, there's, there's no... There's no standardization in the relationship. And what the IRM group's trying to do, having done the report and done the principles, is dive into the into the really fine-grained detail of standardizing what that relationship um, means in a different in specific contexts. Because that is the, it's that standardization thing that we, we try to dive into, and it's bloody hard. Um, but we think this is the way in which you, you can actually take it, uh, take something as ephemeral as a relationship and standardise it in a way that's codable. That's that's. So what I mean, the, there's some really interesting stuff there, right? I mean, one of the examples is, is simply if we start looking at things like, for example, in an IoT use case, I buy a new. I don't know, mumbly widget. Um, Take the light bulb. Right, something. <laughs> I've, got, I've got this magic black box, and I want to be able to access it on my network. But what are the things that it can connect to? What is it? What does it know about? Right. What What can I do? So either we have a big book of stuff that we have to manually type in, and each one has its own. But how can it tell the other devices on my network? that it understands light bulbs, or that, that it understands my Nest thermostat, or it understands my Alexa. But these are all relationships that may be really useful. Even in a traditional retail use case, imagine you've got a retail store, and they define different kinds of groups of customers. How can it tell you, this is a wedding party that is registered for gifts? That's a relationship, right? It's a relationship between different identities. And the problem is, how do we propagate that without having some kind of notation by which we can define these relationships? So I just want to throw out some, some potential use cases where we could see being able to, to have a way of describing those relationships means we can utilize them across an ecosystem. Got two more questions. Sorry, questions. Good. First, the beginning of your presentation, you spoke about uh, relations management. Yep. Is that role or question already existing? No. Uh, my, maybe. Yeah. yeah. We don't know. We do not have this problem. What, what we what, what we did is um, what we did so far is describing the language. Okay. We could say. If we agree on RDF, if we agree on, uh, on the triple stores, if we agree on ontologies, then I would say yes, we already have relationship managers on the market. They're just, just not specifically used for that right now. The ontology definition and standardization seems like a very hard problem across the whole industry is that somewhere the pro like is there progress being made on that process? How do two people agree on what the definition of a light bulb is? Like that's <laughs> 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 like, like, Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Like basically yeah. it could be an LED light bulb or this <coughs> light bulb and then you yeah. have features and things like yeah. that. Like that yeah. whole process and that standardization seems so 
so hard. Yeah. So the definition it, of it, language is it it is, how do you make progress? In it is something that needs more effort. Okay. This by, 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 by everyone. Let, let, let's see if, um, we already have the effort for that in the linked data area and ontology where, where we have a lot of stuff defined. Also the the definition what, what is a brand? So there's something like a Dublin core ontology where you have a lot of standard stuff in our daily world of life defined. Okay. Um, in the end, it needs to be an agreement between groups. Um, we have a kind of that, maybe we will talk about that today, the, the uh, European digital single market, which also goes in that direction to have that infrastructure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, just say if you uh, get punched by many people in the room and reduce the oxygen a bit, and then you start fighting on definitions. It's like a it's rough, so it's you have to reduce the oxygen. Yeah. One, one of the points that I would look on that is I don't believe that you can come up with a complete ontology. Uh -huh. But what we do need to have is a grammar that we can talk about ontologies. Okay. Right. So each, as we say, each user group, each group of interest is going to define an ontology that means something for them. But what we need to have is a standardized way to be able to say, these are the nouns I understand, these are the verbs I understand, let's, let's at least describe what the ontology looks like. And I think that's what the IRM group is looking at, is to say, let's talk about how you describe okay. an ontology between different entities.